Well, good evening. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you for today. I ask you to help bless this word. Let your word come alive. Let it come forward. Don't let it be me, but Lord, let it be your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm in the book of Micah. Um, I was reading some this evening, and I happened to come by a verse, and um, uh, I always like to read a verse that applies to our day. It applies to the time that we live in. And I realize that it's very easy to take the scripture maybe out of context and remove its characterization of what the Bible's talking about back in that day. I think that God was seeing the different kinds of worship. And we read here where God was actually uh, uh, mentioning some things to um, the the priest and um, this man Micah no doubt was pointing some things out and I'm just going to see if I can see the, how it applies to us today in our world. I'm in Micah chapter 3. And I'm going to start with verse 5, and we'll just do 5 and 6, um, or at least that is the plan. It says in verse 5, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. The reason that there is so many people that are erring today spiritually Sad to have to announce, but the error is from what is being taught in the pulpit. Now, some people have their uh, religion and their religious ways and the things that they have been taught. And, you know, it's a lot like I heard someone say one time, a parrot can only say the things that the parrot has been taught to say. And when you hear someone parroting something from the Bible, you believe that the Bible is saying words that you hear someone else say. Well, in a sense, what the Lord is saying here, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, that make my people error, right there lets you know that God was looking at the things that would make the people confused. It would make people um, uh, very confused. And the Lord was saying this in verse number 5, that bite with their teeth and cry peace. See, they bite with their teeth. I mean, it's their sharpness of the words. You know, when you bite with your teeth, it's a lot like the sharpness of your attitude toward the message that you bring. Some places are very easy to speak to the people. I've never been one to be demanding. I've never been one to yell at someone. I mean, I've realized that preachers have a tendency to raise their voice and they feel that, you know, they're more spiritual when they raise their voice. You know, you just more spiritual. You you got you just got something that hardly few people have when you can yell your message. Well in the nursing home, I do believe in talking loud enough for everybody to hear me, but I'm not to the point of yelling. I speak loud because they have such a hard time 
listening to the words that I'm saying that in order for everybody to hear, you got to speak up. You got to speak loud enough where they can hear, but you don't have to yell at people. There's some that they feel the anointing is on them. The louder they are, the more anointed the message. Well, that's simply not true. That's simply not true. I don't happen to believe that Jesus yelled every message he ever brought. I don't think Jesus had to. I think Jesus, when you read the scripture, it doesn't give you indication that he was raising his voice at anybody. Even if you turn over to John uh, chapter 2, I think, when... Uh, Jesus was turning the tables over. He didn't turn the tables over just in anger of turning the tables over. I mean, yes, he turned the tables over, but but I believe that what he was saying was, yes, did he raise his voice when he said, take the animals out of here? Yeah. Yeah, they was making the house a den of thieves, you might say. But I don't think that Jesus was saying it in a way of hostile anger. I think he was saying it in a way to get them to shut the thing down, to get it to stop, to give it, to give it opportunity to change the course of the matter. And that's what I believe the Lord is saying here. That bite with their teeth and cry peace. I can say peace, but I can say peace in the wrong attitude. And I think a lot of times it's the wrong attitude of the messenger's message. You know, we got so far away from salvation, it ain't even funny. Very few churches today preach salvation. They're just not going to do it. Because... You know, it's always easy to go and say, well, you know, all of the people in this church is saved. Well, I don't believe that. I believe you can go to any size congregation. I don't care if it's five or 50. You're always going to have a few that is never going to understand salvation. I didn't. For a many a year of my life, I didn't understand salvation. And then it says here, And he that putteth not into their mouths, talking about these people, the prophets, the preachers, it says, putteth not into their mouths, it's talking about the message that they are bringing, He's, they're not delivering the message of where the people can eat it up. You know, I would like to be able to be known as someone that brings a simple message, but brings a simple message of where people learn how to dine on what is being said. If I'm doing a message today and you can't dine on this message, then I don't have no business in doing the message. And I believe that that's what the writer here is saying here. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. That's where we are today, even in 2022, is you got a lot of people that are in church, but they are erring when it comes to salvation. I mean... That's what I believe that the Word of God is saying, that bite with their teeth and cry peace. You know, a minister can get up there and cry peace, but deliver the wrong kind of message. And he that put us not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. You know, some, you go against their... uh, a set of rules and there, you know, if you don't walk a fine line under their leadership, then it's almost like it's wartime. 
But see, verse 6 is the verse that I really wanted to hone in on. Therefore, now you notice, therefore is a continuation of verse number 5. Therefore, night shall be unto you. Night. What is night? Can I tell you what night is? That there's night. Darkness. Night. Blackness. We fixing to read a little bit more. This is a picture of darkness. Therefore night shall be unto you. How many people's in the dark today? How many people is content to be in the darkness today? Therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. Now he's talking about the prophets here. It says, therefore night shall be unto you, meaning the ones that are bringing the message is in darkness. There's a, there's a likelihood of darkness being in the messenger that is bringing the message. That's what he's saying. Therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. You know what? When I turn out this light, there's no vision. The room in here is dark. The room is nighttime in here. I can't read my Bible like this. I'm in the dark. How many preachers are in the dark? How many preachers are content to be in the dark? It says, for, Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you. I just proved what darkness is. How many people is stuck in the darkness? How many people is content to being stuck in the darkness? How many priests and pastors are stuck in the darkness. That's what he's saying right here. I can't read my Bible without turning the light back on. Y'all have seen how dark it is in this room when I simply turn the light off. That's one kind of darkness. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. You know what that means? I've got a little book here that was laying on my desk that I read on just a little bit before I went to air about the book of Micah. It's only a page or two that's about the book of Micah. You know how I was able to divine what was in this book. It took the light shining down on the page with these feeble eyes of mine to look down and look at the words that was written on just these two pages right here. These two pages, three pages right here, was the only page that had anything to do with Micah. In order for me to divine what is on this page, it took a certain amount of light. I couldn't have read this verse without having a certain amount of light. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. What does it mean by divine. I feel like I'm getting understanding by having light to come out here and look at the verse. 
that I'm doing, how many preachers today is not getting divine counsel from God? They're not getting it. There's a lot of people that are and have been off course. When your focus is on the flesh, when your focus is is on miracles only, when your focus is just on the do's and don'ts of the commandments, if your focus is just on church membership and paying your money to the church, if that is all your focus, could it be possible that maybe, just maybe, that ye shall not divine See, when our focus is on everything else but on what really pleases the Lord, ask yourself a question. Would the Lord preach tithing in 2022? I don't think he would. I really don't think he would preach on that. I think he would preach salvation. I think he would bring people to the cross. I believe he would tell people about the sacrifice that he made on Calvary so that men, women, boys, and girls can be able to know that they can go to heaven. I just believe that at times we get in our focus where we don't really care to divine what God is saying. It's almost like that we don't really know what God is saying because we can't divine it. And the Bible says, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, the sun, the brightness, the light of the Spirit of God. It's not necessarily talking about my light, but let's face it. When the sun goes out, ain't it amazing that it's dark? I have to watch where I walk when I come out here to the room because there's no light till I get to the string of when I turn the light on. What is he saying right here? And the sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them meaning the daytime in the brightness of our day, the day shall be dark over them. You know why we are content to live in darkness? Is because we think that if we stay in the pulpit and deliver our three-point messages and we say all the words that we think is right before God to say, but yet we are telling people stories and telling people lies to keep them indoctrinated to come back. That's not good. I think one of the things that hurts me more than anything is knowing that I could be in a group of 50 people that would be, say, in a local assembly and to wonder just how many of them 50 people is truly born again of the Spirit. I still remember that preacher one time telling me when I met him, And I told him my focus was on salvation and how that the churches had a lot of people in churches that wasn't saved. And he just flat out told me, he said, well, everybody in my church is saved. I thought to myself, I would never have made that claim at all, ever. And, you know, I believe the Lord heard what that man said now Could he have been sincere in what he was saying? I guess he could have been sincere. But I'll just be honest with you. There's people that really don't know. You know, I don't know who is saved and who is not saved. But I know of what Micah wrote right here in chapter 3. 
Therefore night shall be unto you. Talking about the priests now. Now, if the priest is in the darkness, that also means that the people also could very well be in darkness as well. Therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. It takes vision for me to come out here. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. Meaning you won't get clear understanding when I'm sitting out here in the darkness. And the sun shall go down over the prophets. And the day shall be dark over them. Just two verses today. It just sort of spoke to me that if this applied in Micah's day, how much more does it apply in our day? Does it apply in our day? That's the question I believe that people have to ask themselves. Elderly Ministry is the website, elderlyministry.com. And then Elderly Ministry is the YouTube channel. You're welcome to go there and take a look. If I can do anything or help you in any way, by all means, reach out to me. If there's anything I can help you with, I'd be glad to talk with you. Just give me a buzz, give me email, text, or whatever, and I'll get back with you. Okay, make sure that you stay in the light of Christ. Don't listen to fables and wives' tales that get you in trouble. Thank you for watching.